you're in a communications class, chances are you'll be writing a speech. When communicating information verbally, it's really important to make sure that your facts are correct and they're backed up by credible and reputable sources. Take factcheck.org for example. This website takes any major political speech and checks the facts. So imagine if the president incorrectly states a fact in one of his speeches. What would you think of it? More than likely, you'll doubt his credibility, knowledge, expertise, and it'll cast a really bad light on anything he says from here on out. It would damage his personal credibility. As a student writing a persuasive speech, for example, it would be really difficult to sway others to your opinion, to your side of the issue, if you incorrectly state facts. So the purpose of this video is to show you where and how to find these credible and reputable sources of information to back up the information you're speaking. So we're going to go over the research process, how to tell which sources are good ones, and then finally how and where to search for the information you're going to need for your speech. The research process is exactly what it sounds like. It's a process that you should go through whenever you're trying to find research. If you go through all four steps, it'll get you closer to exactly what you're wanting to find right off the bat instead of wandering around the databases for a few hours, not finding what you need. So the first is choosing a topic. Um, sometimes you may have just a general idea in mind, but it's better to have a clear idea of what you're going to be researching. Because the next step is finding background information. So this is where Google, um, Wikipedia will come in handy. It's a real, they're really great sources to find just the general information, the rough overview, especially for topics that you're not so familiar with. So when you're finding background information, what you're looking for is, again, that general information to get you acquainted with the topic, but also maybe other terms that your topic goes by, because this is going to feed into the next step of your keywords. And this also is exactly what it sounds like. These are the key words that you're going to be using when you get to the databases. These are the words that you're going to be searching. So if you have um, a clear idea of your topic, you're looking at background information, um, maybe you see that, maybe your topic is gun control, and you see in articles about gun control, they talk a lot about gun laws and gun legislation even. Um, those are those are other topics that go hand in hand with the issue, larger issue of gun control. So now you know when you go to the databases, if you know you've run out of sources for gun control, type in gun laws, gun legislation, and you'll get more articles on the general same topic. So these keywords are really, really important to come up with before you even get to the databases. Um, and they also can be synonyms for words. So I said laws and legislation. Those are pretty much synonyms, so you can use them interchangeably. If you're not finding things on laws, try legislation, and you may find more articles and more um, sources that you need. So you've got your topic, your background information, you've come up with this list of keywords. Now is the time you go into the databases, into wherever you're searching, and you find your sources. And again, if you do all of those other three steps before you even get there, it's going to speed up your process of finding exactly what you need. So go through this research process. It will really help you in the long run. What if you go through all of these steps to the research process and you find all these articles and uh, sources? How do you evaluate them? How do you tell which ones are good and which ones aren't? This is especially important with websites. If you go outside of this video, there are some sources there. So you can pause this video and um, go do those tutorials. We have one on evaluating web pages, evaluating um, how to tell what's a scholarly, popular, or trade source. Um, and the last one is a chart that'll walk you through the five things you should look at in each source to tell if it's a good article, to tell if it's one that you really want to use. So pause the video, go do those tutorials, and then come back, and then we will talk about how and where to find the information that you're going to need for your speeches. So you've looked, you've gone through the research process, you've gone through the tutorials on how to evaluate the sources that you find. Um, where do you go to find this stuff? For a communication speech, there are three general places that you'll want to look. 
The first I'm sure you're familiar with is Google. Uh, like I said, for that fine background information step, Google is a great way to get this general information. Um, it's a really great place uh, also for statistics. And I'll show you at the end of the video, after we go through this slide, how to get to exactly what you need with Google, how to use it effectively. Again, Google is a great resource if you use it effectively because you have to sift through all the other junk to get to what you really need and something that you can actually use in an academic paper, in an academic speech. So Google is the first place. After you find that general information, it's good if you go to our ECU database issues and controversies. Uh, just like with the research process and the keywords, this is self-explanatory. It's a database that talks about issues and controversial topics. It's a really great source, especially for speeches, um, especially for those persuasive speeches, argumentative, because it's going to list the pros and cons. It's going to tell you both sides of the issue. Um, it's pulling in a lot of these editorial sources, which means sources from newspapers, magazine articles. So it goes along with Google in that finding that background information, and it'll really help you form your argument and your, um, your side of the story on your speech. And then once you find that stuff with Google and issues and controversies, it's really good if you go into one of our databases that has scholarly material. Now, if you went through the evaluating resources tutorial, you know that scholarly is information that comes from scholars or experts. These are experts on the topic. And these two databases, either Master File Complete or Progress Research, Research Library, these databases will give you that scholarly material. So for issues and controversies and these other two databases, again, outside of this video, uh, there's going to be two tutorials that will walk you through the database and how to search through them. So after this, you can go and complete those. So lastly, I want to show you what I was talking about before with Google and how to use it effectively. As I said, Google is a great place to get background information, and for that, you can just type in your keywords like you would normally do with a Google search. But what if you are using it to find statistics for your speech? Statistics are really great to add to your speech, to add sort of weight to what your side of the issue is. So, and you know from the How to Evaluate Resources tutorials that um, .gov, .edu, and .org sources are the better ones to find more credible information than .com, because .com is trying to sell you something. So, but how do you sift through the Google results to only search these .gov or .edu websites? Well, what you can do is just pull Google hat. I'm going to type in gun control site colon .gov. Now, what I'm telling Google right now, the Google search engine, is that I'm searching gun control which are, is a keyword that I was using. So you type any of your keywords in here, whatever you're looking for. So gun control. I'm looking for that on any site that has .gov at the end of it. Okay, so this is what I'm telling the system right now. So now when I run that search, you will see that every single result here has .gov at the end of it. Okay. So again, especially for statistics, um, the government publishes a lot of reports and a lot of these statistics that you might want to use. So to get to these in the .gov, you can put this, use this Google hack, and it'll get to exactly what you need, rather than searching gun control in general on Google and then trying to sift through everything. Okay, so this is a really great Google hack that you can do to get to statistics. So say if I wanted to look at .org, you know, a lot of organizations publish reports. So I will put gun control site colon dot org and do a search and now you can see dot org dot org so use this google hack um, like i said it's especially great for finding statistics especially if you can't find it you know through the scholarly sources all right so now that you have all of the tools that we've talked about you've gone through the research process you know how to tell which sources are good ones and you know the databases and the sources that you should use to find this information you're looking for you are ready to write your speeches and as always if you are having trouble if you can't tell which sources are good ones especially for web pages maybe even um, if you're having trouble narrowing down your topic topic and coming up with keywords please feel free to ask a librarian that's what we're here for we're here to help you um, and whatever you need for finding research.